You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocus Radio. We are here once again. And man, today we have another amazing show lined up for y'all today. We're going to talk to the one and only Rocky Buckley. He has an amazing website and he has an amazing service that he does. He is the creator of the plat- plat- Path in the Power Persona Project. First and foremost, I want to welcome you, Rocky, to the show. Say, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, great to be here. It's a nice Friday night. We're relaxed right, right ahead of the weekend. So we're going to have a good conversation here today. Thanks for having me on. So, man, before we dive into everything that you do, man, share with our audience some of the details about yourself and just how you got to where you are today. Yeah, sure. Well, the kind of people that I focus on helping today are people with really high potential, really smart, talented people who find themselves stuck, (laughs) people who, when they grew up, kind of dreamed of being somebody and maybe being famous or making a big impact on the world. And, you know, while they're really smart and they're talented and really good at what they do, they need some help in figuring out how do they become the best version of themselves, especially in the social age that we're living in, where we're all on some level having to be a public figure on social media and how do we actually, you know, if we want to make that impact on the world, we want to make that difference. How can we stand out, get attention, break through all of the noise and the the clutter that's out there and really get our message through. So, you know, for me, it started, you know, all the way back as a kid, I was one of those kind of people. I was a high potential kid, but I always had this, this thing about potential put on me that you can be anything you want and so on. And I always felt this sense of pressure to deliver and actually become something, you know, important or whatever. And, you know, for many, many years, you know, I felt that I was living a life that was not um, aligned with who I could have been, the, the highest level of achievement that I could have been capable of. And so I always felt like I was really underachieving my potential and I felt that I was stuck and so on. And even though I had built a, a pretty successful business, it was really misaligned with with what I really wanted to do and making the impact on people's lives that I I really wanted to make. So a few years ago, I shifted my focus. I had primarily been consulting with very large corporations, helping them to produce all sorts of products and trainings and, and material like that. And I wanted to shift my focus more toward that solo entrepreneur, the person who has a personal brand. They might be an expert or a thought leader, somebody like that, and really help them package themselves, package their knowledge, expertise, and build a great business. And most importantly, you know, a great life. And to me, a great life means, you know, you've got a great income and lifestyle and so on, but you're also, you know, making a difference. You feel very fulfilled in what you're doing. You're passionate. You're happy to wake up every morning and do what you love. And so for me, success is really about that whole, that whole package. And you're hitting on all four of those big, big cylinders. So that's kind of where, what got me here today. And that's awesome, man. So with that, let's dive into everything that you're doing right now, helping your clients and helping your your community. When it comes to branding, I mean, that's a big, big topic, not just in the United States, but all around the world. It's very sure. important for everyone to be intentional with the branding. But when it comes to just having that personal branding and just that conscious of identity design, what are the steps for the individual to discover their core brand and the message that's behind it? Yeah, I think the one thing that that people focus on primarily when they think about personal branding is all of the external items. You know, what what does my website look like? What does my social media, you know, profile look like? What my photo shoot, maybe my fashion, what am I projecting externally? What are my fonts, you know, the logo and all of that kind of thing. People mostly think about branding as an external, um, you know, process or, or what people see visually. And to me, it really goes a lot deeper than that. And and there's something internal that makes all of those external things work. And that's when a person is truly in touch with their sense of purpose in life. You know, why am I here? Who am I here? here to serve. They see themselves as a person capable of helping those people, um, excuse me, (laughs) Um, 
And, you know, it's all beginning to shape, you know, that authentic identity from within, that best version of yourself. And the idea is, how do I create that? And so for people who become famous and they become a, a person that other people just flock to, they're able to build a large audience and so on, and people that love them, there's kind of a mysterious X factor about, well, why does one person become famous and another person who is pretty much saying the same kind of things, they might be just as attractive or whatever, why does one person become famous and another person doesn't? And oftentimes there's a lot of internal factors under the surface that you have to look at. And it's like, it could be mindset issues. Does this person truly authentically believe in themselves and what they're saying? And sometimes people can pick up on that really subtle difference, but there might be just a slight lack of confidence in one person that there is in another person. It could also be that what you're saying is kind of to the wrong audience. You Maybe you haven't really dialed into who that target audience is and saying things in a way that they're really connecting with. Um, what kind of messaging? You know, maybe you're communicating enthusiastically, you're a charismatic person, but the message, the kind of way that you're talking about your topic isn't resonating. Maybe there's areas where you're really good communicating, but you're not sharing enough about your own life story. So people feel like, wow, this person is providing me very good information, but I don't know what they're all about, you know, and they, you want, they want to learn more about you. And maybe you're not sharing enough from your personal life, your life story in a way that's connecting with people. So there can be a whole number of factors, including strategic factors. You know, do I sound like everybody else in my market? You know, what, what is it about me that's unique? What can make me different? And so there's a whole range of, of issues that are under the surface that if we were to bring these out, and really look at them, we could effectively start to take control of the process. We could begin to design that ideal public figure, that public persona version of ourselves that represents us at our best. And sometimes it's just unlocking those little slight factors and just shifting them a little bit. It's almost like a camera lens that's just slightly out of focus. And once you just turn it a little bit, all of a sudden, it snaps into focus and you get that clear signal of what that person's about and they start to click. So I think invariably, if you look back at some of the, you know, really famous people, whether they're actors or celebrities or people in business, if you were to look at their early stuff, you know, you would be able to kind of see the talent there, but there would be something off that over time they started to figure it out and they started to get closer and closer to dialing in their message, their persona, all of that in a way that mirrored the market, that reflected back to the people watching that that person is somebody that's like me. I relate to them. I can connect to them. And that opens up, you know, all of that connection between the person and their audience. And once again, let's to our Iron Refocus Radio talking to Rocky Buckley, our guest for today. And man, like what you are just talking about, when people find what they're good at, now it's, I like the part where you're talking about adjusting the lens because that's what it really is, is, is making those tiny adjustments along the way. Because if you think you're just going to be perfect being an entrepreneur or, or successful in your career, it's not going to happen that way. And especially like if you're not conscious of it, if you're, that's what I, that's really what I focus on is try to make those things that are kind of hidden and under the surface, show them to people, make them aware of them. These are the factors that really connect that if you have these factors aligned, this is when you're going to project your clearest, most powerful magnetic signal out to, you know, to your audience. And if just some of those things are just a little bit off, it's just, it's just not going to, not going to click. And we're in such a competitive marketplace where everybody's trying to get attention. Everybody's trying to get eyeballs and get somebody to listen to them that those slight differences can mean you know, all the difference in the world between not making it and making, you know, millions and millions of dollars and having millions of fans and followers all around the world. The difference is really, really small. And like we said earlier in the show, you are the founding creator of Platinum Path, the website plat platinumpath.co. When it comes to the resources that you provide. You're helping brands to level up and go to the next level when it comes to income, how they sell, how they can maximize their the business revenue. 
what's some of the common practices that you start out with your clients, whether it's just getting to know about the brand or getting to know about their their goals for their brand? Yeah, sure. What I what I find is that a lot of people are stuck at the business model level and they don't really see it. It's something that is kind of invisible. And it's something that Michael Gerber talked about in his you know classic book, The E-Myth, where a lot of people, when you know, most of us, when we start our business, we start as something what he calls a technician. It's that we're very good at something and we we start to see an opportunity to become our own boss. And you know, work for ourselves, and that kind of is is the dream, right? It's the idea of well, okay, I'm not, I'm going to get out of my job. I'm not going to have anybody tell me what to do. I'm going to have freedom. I'm going to control my own thing. But invariably, what happens is the person hasn't really thought about it much beyond that. It took me a really long time to figure it out. I didn't come from anybody in my family who was in business, so I had no real frame of reference for business other than. I want to be my own boss. I'd like to work from home. I want to have this nice lifestyle with my wife and my family. But what happens after a while is you start to realize that on a business model level, you can do things really well and find yourself trapped. So for example, in in the space that I deal with, with solopreneurs, a lot of people who are consultants and coaches or speakers, authors, people like that, they tend to build a business model where they're making their money, serving people one-on-one. And so they're all, they're essentially trading their time for money and they, their income is capped. And this is how it was for me as well. I could only take on so much client work before I max out. And so I really, my business model constrained what I could make. And therefore it constrained a lot of things. I had to take on clients that I didn't want to take on. I had to work with people and, and perform, you know, different kinds of services or things that weren't really what I did my, my best at, but I kind of had to take on the work, right? So my calendar was filled up. And so my business model over time became a trap. And I realized that I needed a multiplier. I needed some form of leverage to get me out of the center of my business and then be able to actually grow it. So in my case, it, it meant extracting the knowledge out of my head and putting it into a format that other people could consume in a one-to-many format. So for me, that meant, you know, putting my knowledge into courseware, into that kind of a format, group coaching, um, things that actually had leverage in them. So I could do things one time, and essentially, a lot, a lot of people could be, you know, partaking in that at the same time. So, you know, making these business model shifts can also involve pricing. A lot of times, you know, we're we're trying to basically either be the low person in the market and compete on the basis of price or at least be competitive price wise, which keeps us in the middle of the market, fighting for the same clients with everybody else. But the way out of that is to find a way to take what you're already doing and tweak it so that it's a lot more valuable, so that you can charge a lot more for it and you can aim at clients or customers who are willing to pay a premium. So it's about making that shift really in two levels. It's can we, can I raise my pricing and can I take what I do and put it in a different format so that it's scalable? And those are really the two escape levers <laughs> that allow somebody to wrap, they basically take what they're already doing, take what they already know and make a shift and it can completely change your business model. So inside Platinum Path, that's what I really work with the entrepreneur on. How do we basically take the assets and the resources that you've already got within you, within your business, and really get extract the most value out of, out of it? How do we make you worth more? And how do we allow you to spread your knowledge and expertise to a lot more people instead of just sort of one at a time? So those two big shifts, I think, are, are core to what we do in Platinum Path. Then we teach people how to systemize what they know into intellectual property and position their business so that one day it could even be sold to an outside party. So a lot of us don't even think about that. You know, it took me 10 years in my business to realize, like, I could sell my business one day to somebody. Somebody would actually be interested in buying my business. It never even occurred to me because I was mostly in it to be my own boss and work for myself. And I never thought about the escape path out that I could have a windfall or, you know, a cash out one day. So when we think about our business at this business model level, it can really make a lot of profound shifts in what we do day to day. And so that's what I take people on, on what I call a platinum path to higher pricing and much more scale in your business. And that's, 
that's some good points there when, when entrepreneurs are thinking about being their own boss, quote unquote. That's the easy stage. But life gets really real, really fast once you get <laughs> past that first year or a couple of years or however long been however long you've been in business. Now when you're trying to get to those next levels, you you want to have your price so that you can be able to live the lifestyle you want to live. What's some the what's some of the right steps an entre- entrepreneurs should generally make before they make that decision to just up the price? Are yeah, there certain have, rules? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people in like the high ticket program space that talk about pricing as if it's just a mindset issue. If it, that it's just something like you just have to decide you're worth it <laughs> and that you could just go, okay, I'm, I'm worth it. So I'm going to now 10 times what I'm, what I'm charging. That invariably doesn't work very well. Now, there are people who are great at what they do and they're severely undercharging. So for those people, it's like a revelation. And you can have people like that who they finally do charge what they're worth and their business skyrockets. And I think those are a lot of the success stories that you see. You know, a person who was severely undercharging and just decided, I'm going to fix my mindset. I'm worth it. And I'm going to now just puff my chest out a little bit and say, (laughs) you know, they make that mindset shift. For most of us, though, we actually do have to become more valuable. And so it requires really understanding what value is and what are those triggers that will enable a person to charge more or for the buyer, what are those triggers that that cause somebody to say, I value that, I want that, and I'm willing to spend a lot of money on that. So I talk a lot in my program about value and motivation and really understanding those mental and emotional levers inside the buyer that make them be willing to pull the trigger on, you know, a $10,000 program or something like that. And typically it's the value of the problem, right? So for example, if you are a personal trainer and you typically work with people who they, they want to get in shape for the beach, you know, they want, they need to lose 10 pounds or something like that, get in shape, be a little more fit. That, that, that activity is not that high a value monetarily, but to somebody who needs to lose a hundred pounds, and transform their body radically because they, maybe they have some health issues. And the solution of transforming their body would, would change their entire life. It would change their health. It would change their relationships. It would change their business prospects because they look totally different. Their energy level is much higher. For a person like that, being able to have a body transformation it's almost a priceless result if they can get that. So if you're a personal trainer, basically the same techniques you would use to help someone lose 10 pounds could be applied to someone losing 100 pounds. The person losing 100 pounds has much more urgency. The problem is much more severe. And the value of getting that result is much, much higher. So sometimes it's just taking like, what do I already know? And just apply it in a bit of a different direction. And now all of a sudden, what I do is worth a lot more. And that can be in, you know, whether it's business or relationships, sometimes we have to just become more valuable. Another way to become more valuable is to change the way that we deliver our solution. So if, you know, the way that we're typically working with people is hourly, you know, 30 minute or one hour sessions, there's no real intellectual property. There's no real system or framework that we're taking people through. We're, we're essentially bringing people into kind of an open ended process. They don't know how long it's going to take. And from the coach or consultant standpoint, we, we kind of have mixed incentives because we want them to stay with us and keep paying us. <laughs> so we want them to stay with us longer. So we kind of are, we don't mind if they don't get the results that fast because we want them to pay, right? So if we can shift what we do to a defined result in a defined time frame, if we can promise somebody, say, in 90 days, you're going to get this kind of a result. It's a fixed time frame, and I've got a set process or system that I'm going to bring you through in those 90 days to get that result. Suddenly, the perceived value goes way, way up. People can suddenly start to say in their mind, losing 100 pounds, is it worth $5,000 or $10,000 to me? If I could lose 100 pounds in the next 90 days, let's say, would that be worth it to me? So we're putting the value right in front of them in a way that's very clear. They can see the result. They can see the price. And then it's very simple to decide, is it worth it? Should I go for it, right? When we don't have that, the perceived value is all over the place. 
when we're just kind of charging a certain hourly rate and it, the person is saying, well, at my job, I'm only making this much per hour. So, but as a coach, I'm paying you like 10 times what I make, you know, it's kind of doesn't compute at some level, but if it's framed in, in the, in light of a specific result, they're paying not for the hourly work, they're paying for the result. It, it completely clarifies the value of what they're paying for. So I would say those are really kind of the hallmarks of really raising your profile, you know, becoming more valuable in the problem that you solve and in the way that you solve it. When you can do those two things, it can be transformational in your business. It's almost like uh, comparing a Happy Meal to a luxury car. Yeah. It's going to be way differences in those two yeah, scenarios. Yeah. And yeah, but it doesn't mean that you're selling to the affluent. Like I think a lot of people, one of the fears that people have about going more high ticket in their business is to say, well, you know, only rich people can afford that. If I elevate my pricing that much, I'm going to limit the kind of people that I can help only to the wealthy who can afford it. And that's really not the case because what we find is when people want a result really badly, they will find the money. They're, they, people are very resourceful. And when we want something and we really believe that that can help us, we'll figure out a way to get the finances. You know, Now, again, this assumes that you're actually really good at what you do and you can get the result. And I think that's one of the things that people have found over the last few years in the high ticket space. There's a lot of people selling stuff that doesn't work. And a lot of people have gotten burned. So if you're going to go this route, Really be conscientious and make sure that you deliver a result and you can basically, you know, provide what you're promising to people or don't do it. You know, use good values and morals and and just make sure that you're doing the right thing. And I listen to, you know, other shows, podcasts and stuff. And I also hear that when you're making that kind of level of income you most likely are investing a lot of that in yourself as well. Yeah. Like you're not just, like you said earlier, you're not just saying, oh, I'm worth X amount of dollars, so I'm going to just blow it all off and just yeah. enjoy life. No, no, no. <laughs> you're probably investing in conferences. You're probably investing in books. You probably have a coach or you probably have certain resources that are in your lifestyle that's allowing you to pour that value into your clients. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that, you know, for many of us who've come to this point in our careers, we've invested a lot. If you just were to look back, at least for me, I, I started my business in the last century. <laughs> so like over the last, you know, we're now in 2022, you know, the last 23 years or so, um, you know, I look back at the things that I've invested in and some of them worked and some of them didn't, but all of them to some degree contributed something. And, um, you know, even though there have been things that haven't worked out, I've you know spent five grand on a weekend conference or a ten thousand dollar program or something like that. There was always some value that I could extract out of it, even if it didn't live up to everything that you know that it promised. Again, I, I'm for I want people to you know deliver what they promise, but when you invest in yourself, invariably it comes back to you in any number of ways. So I always recommend like that is the number one thing that you can do is invest in your own skill, in your own development, because the more powerful, the more intelligent, the more aware you become. Um, it just, it has a ripple effect that carries throughout everything you do from that point forward. Man, once again, we have the honor of talking to our guest today, Rocky Buckley. You go to his amazing website. His website is platinumpath.co. Man, before we uh, sign off, time flies by when we having fun. When people are learning more about your services, all the resources that you have, what's that one thing that separates you from everybody else that puts your fingerprint on how you're doing your business? Yeah, I think it has to do with the 20-something the years I spent in consulting with a lot of big companies and working with a lot of authors and experts in nine different countries. I've actually had my hands on over 3,000 projects <laughs> that I've helped my clients bring to reality. So I'm somebody who has a prolific track record of getting things done in the real world and getting real results. And I, and I look around me in the space that I'm in, and I don't really see anybody else who has a track record like that, even close to anything like that. And I think that the real difference for me is that I see 
helping people and taking people through a process of transformation, very much through a project management sort of lens. I'm all about like building the systems and the timelines and the deadlines and the deliverables and really helping somebody go through a step-by-step -step process where everything's really clear and you're on a track that will lead you to that result. You will get the outcome if you follow the steps. And so I think it's that sensibility that I built up over all these years, you know, working with clients and creating all of these projects and products um, that's given me that focus. So it's not like we're just going to meander and float around and you're not really going to get help. It's like, I will drive you through a timeline <laughs> to get that thing that you want done actually done and get it in into the real world as a real thing. So I think that just gives me a, a very different point of view than a lot of other people have. And also on your website, you have a free strategy session to see if the uh, client and, and your uh, business is a good fit together. So people can also go to your website and, and schedule a free strategy session real quick or some of the things they can expect in that session. Sure. In that session, we're going to talk through what your goals are and what your desires are and what's been holding you back. And, you know, a lot of these things, people have become very suspicious of strategy sessions because, uh, you know, invariably it's a sales call. And for me, I don't really look at it that way. For me, it's a pretty deep probe. Um, you know, I don't work with very many people at all one-on-one. -on -one. It's it's a very, very tiny part of what I do in business. Um so I'm I'm mostly you know looking to see people that can I really help you, but it's also I'm disqualifying a lot of people that I can't help, you know. So for me, it's a it's a real deep dive. I really want to find out about the person and explore and see can I authentically really help them, and also it's to build that rapport. You know, can they can do they want to work with me? Can they trust me and so on? So it's a real deep dive session, and and hopefully they get some value out of it. I give some good strategy and some advice and so on. And, um, you know, it's it's worth the time. They always come out of it with something valuable, I think. So. Once again, man, listen, I refocus radio I'm talking to Rocky Buckley. Go to his website, platformpath.co. If you're ready to take your business to the next level and really serious about delivering the income and lifestyle that you really want, you need to go check out Platinum Path. Co. Sign up for that free session. You can't beat that. I mean, you already have the foot in the door. I mean, what else can you ask for? So once again, man, I want to say thank you to you, Rocky, and for you to have the last statement. Man, what would you like to share our audience before we sign off? Thank you so much. And yeah, in addition to going to my to my Platinum Path website, the, the best way to get to connect with me is just inside of my free Facebook community. So people can go to powerpersonaproject.com. It's a free Facebook group. I'm in there all the time. And I think that's really the best entry point for people to make that first step, make that first connection, get in the group, see what I'm all about. You're going to see um, me operate on a day-to-day -day basis. You'll, you'll also get access to a lot of my interviews with people like Dean Graziosi and Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank and a lot of other people, Stu McLaren, Pedro Adeo, many, many others. Um, and you, so that's that's totally free. And you could just come in and lurk and hang out and never have to, you know, never have to actually sign up for anything like a strategy session and just get to know me as a person and connect that way. And then we can always take it from there afterward. So powerpersonaproject.com for the free Facebook group. Man, you can't beat that either, man. Once again, a lot of great value in this episode. I encourage you to listening right now. Share this with anybody that you know is a seasoned veteran and entrepreneurship business owner, or they just got started. So once again, get connected as soon as you can. Rocky Buckley, I want to say thank you, sir, for taking time to schedule you. talking to us today, man. Oh, you got it. My pleasure. Great questions. Great questions.